Let's name a few well-known bikes. The Specialized Rockhopper. The Trek Fuel. The Kona Hey Hey. What do these bikes have in common? Besides being mountain bike staples, these models have been produced for decades in one form or another. Unfortunately, not all bike models stick around for that long, so in this video, I'm going to discuss four bikes that have been discontinued that I wish were still being made. Just for your information, this list is a good look into the type of bikes I like to ride. So if you're new to the channel, be prepared for some oddball bikes with lots of tire clearance. As it turns out though, bikes that are a little out there are the ones that tend to only last a few years in the market. Manufacturers keep an eye on numbers sold, so if a model doesn't have enough mass appeal, it quickly lands on the chopping block. But anyway, let's dive in. Number one, the Trek Farley EX. The Trek Farley EX is a full suspension fat bike with 120 millimeters of travel front and rear. Trek made this bike for the 2016 to the 2021 model year, with the last couple of years being frame only options. While it might sound crazy to pair fat tires with so much suspension travel, it created a bike that could run over anything and handle drops and jumps without being as jarring or bouncy as a normal fat bike. If you've seen my video on the different types of fat bikes, you know not all fat bikes are built for snow. The Farley EX is one of those bikes that would be okay in snow, but is designed mainly for normal trail use. I actually owned one of these for a bit and still regret selling it. It was a fun bike that could fit fat tires and a 29 plus setup, but I ended up selling it for something that fit my needs better at the time. Number two, the Kona Wozo. Another fat bike that I wish was still made is the Kona Wozo. While it lacked the rear suspension of the Farley EX, this bike was also aimed more at dirt than snow. It was long, low, and relatively slack for a fat bike, meaning it felt at home on steep and technical trails. It even had 420 millimeter chainstays, which is mind-blowingly short for a fat bike. Kona now has the Wu, which is supposed to be a middle ground between the old Wozo and their more adventure-oriented fat bike, the Wo, but it doesn't have the same get rowdy feeling as the Wozo. The early years of this bike had narrower 177 millimeter spacing, but in 2020, they moved that up to 197 and increased the tire clearance from four to four and a half inches. I never owned one, but on paper, it looks like a unique fat bike that would have been a great summer ride, and I'd definitely try to find one of the later models because more tire clearance is always better. Number three, the Salsa Deadwood. This list is in all fat bikes, but with the ability to run 29 by three inch tires, the Salsa Deadwood isn't your run of the mill full suspension mountain bike. The original Deadwood was actually a fully rigid drop bar mountain bike, but only one year later, the bike was transformed into a 29 plus full suspension mountain bike. The 29 plus platform is one of my favorite to ride because of the traction and float it offers without taking too much effort to pedal. With a modern cross country geometry, the Deadwood was built for long rides in the backcountry and even some endurance racing. I frequently ride on trails that are torn up by dirt bikes and four wheelers. So unlike a bike specific trail, I don't really know what the trail surface is going to be like. The Deadwood's 29 plus tires and short suspension travel make it perfect for those types of rides. Unfortunately, this bike was only made from 2017 to 2019, so they're really hard to come by on the used market. Number four, the Niner Ross 9 Plus. The last bike on my list is also a bit of an oddball running the 29 plus tire size. The Niner Ross 9 Plus was also only sold for a few years before being cut from the lineup. Featuring a steel frame and fork and middle of the road geometry, at least at the time, this bike was a pretty good do it all bike that was just plain fun to ride. Having owned this bike for nearly a year, one of my favorite things about it was the eccentric bottom bracket that made single speed setup incredibly easy. My main complaint though, was that Niner built it around non-boost spacing, which meant that the chain line came extremely close to the rear tire when in lower gears. I don't live anywhere with lots of mud, but if I did, I could see it causing issues once things got sloppy. Either way, this was one of my favorite bikes to run single speed, and despite the outdated geometry, I'd own one again. I'm glad that the industry keeps progressing and trying new types of bikes, but there are a few I wish I had bought back when they were still being made. And with the bikes I did own that were cut from production, there are definitely a couple I wish I had never sold. So what do you think of my list? What bikes do you wish were still being made? Are there any bikes you regret selling? Let me know down in the comments. If you enjoyed this video, please be sure to leave a like and subscribe to the channel. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.